I was like, what is this about? That's okay, though. For being so young, you're very, very smart. That's fantastic. Yeah. So keep, keep up the good work, man, and stay flat, okay? Okay, I'm a flat earther. Hello and welcome back to Anti-Religious Scripture Study with me, Karen B., and just Jack Flat Earth. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I'm turning off this light because my head is glowing in the screen, so. <laughs> All right. So, started a little late last week. Sorry for those of you who were here at 11.11 and it didn't happen. That was my fault. That was just Jack's fault and nobody else's. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we were ready to go at 11.11, and, uh, which is in, let's see, About a few two, minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes, yeah. And we're, we can review chapter 33. Yeah. If you'd like. 
Yes. Um, <clears throat> so the command to leave Sinai is the title. So this is where basically Yehovah tells Moshe or Moses that he's going to send a messenger to lead them to somewhere, right? To lead them to the land flowing with milk and honey. Right. <clears throat> again. And again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a reiteration. Like, just to remind you while you're, why you're out here in the first place, right? I didn't lead you out here to hang out in the desert. <laughs> right. Um, the reason that you're still out here is basically your fault, you know? So, yeah, the stiff-necked people, um, it says that, uh, you know, the people heard this evil word, of course, evil meaning it's dysfunctional to them, right? Mm -hmm. That's an important factor. And then the tent of meeting, it, to be in the face of someone does not necessarily mean your literal face, you know, it's either your face or that which turns, so... In the case where a cloud, like it says right here in verse 9, the cloud descended and stood at the door of the tent. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then verse 11 says, thus Jehovah spoke to Moshe face to face. So the description is that the cloud was the representative of Jehovah, where Moshe was interacting, you know, turned towards one another, mm -hmm. right? Not literal face. Because if you take it out of context, then the verse that's further down says that if you if anyone ever sees my face, they can't live. So that's the literal face of the creator, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to get context to understand the difference between the two. And I've known people to take the latter verse to say that there's hypocrisy that um, you know, one place says that he spoke to Yah face to face, which was the verse we just read. And then other verses said, no one can see his face without dying. But if you look at the description of how he was face to face, you'll see that he didn't literally see his face. Right. But he, because he, because, um, Moshe had favor, <clears throat> excuse me, in Yah's eyes to continue on, even though Yah had the right to wipe out the Israelites and start over. Um, he presented himself to Moshe by hiding him into the cleft of the rock and covering him and then passing him. And then it says that Moshe saw the backside of Yehovah. And the way that I see it is the experiences I've had where I feel that I've seen the presence of the creator is this realm becomes very distorted. It starts looking like a, um, I don't want to say the wrong kind of words because people get triggered. Let's just say like the spirit realm looks like the real realm and this realm is not as real. Let's put it that way. This physical realm, mm -hmm. you know, so that kind of experience, um, you know, I think a lot of people have had that kind of experience where they see the, the metaphysical part of this realm. Right. And I think that's what it was to see the back of the creator. Now, this is just Jack's interpretation. I'm no expert. I didn't see through Moshe's eyes. I couldn't tell you. I'm only telling you from my own experience. Right. It's 11-11, by the way. 11-11. Woot, woot. <laughs> and so, um, if you scroll down a little further, please. It's like, okay, so... You found favor in my eyes, and I know you by name. And this is also talking about um, the name it, uh, in the previous chapter. It says, you know, when Moshe is like, if I have to start over and you're going to wipe out all the people, just wipe me out of your book. Right? So this book of life thing that people think is a New Testament philosophy mm -hmm. is way back here in Exodus. Right? Mm -hmm. And then... Um, so here's verse 20. You are unable to see my face for no man does and see me and live. Right. It's not a hypocrisy <laughs> to, to see the fullness of the creator in his face. Like that would be like seeing eternity and your physical body cannot handle that experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would be a trans, you know, you, you could be some kind of a transfiguration, but you're no longer human. You, you, your body cannot live. Right. So, 
Okay. Uh, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. That is the bottom. Okay. And the other thing said, uh, just to get ready for the next chapter, it said, uh, I shall go cause my goodness to pass before you, and I shall proclaim the name of Jehovah before you. Now, this is Jehovah speaking. Jehovah is going to proclaim the name of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's coming up in the next chapter. I'll go ahead and read my disclaimer. Just Jack's disclaimer to the religious. If you believe it's wrong to study scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then this stream is not for you. To others, if you are open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about scripture, if you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in scripture that may have been changed or hidden by religion, if you live according to scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then this stream is for you. We are looking at scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words, as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how con religions contradict the scriptures. All right, there we go. Excuse me one second. All right. All right. So chapter 34. Chapter 34. All right. And Yehovah said to Moshe, Cut two tablets of stone, like the first ones, and I shall write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Okay, so this is literally, instead of cut, it's carver, chisel, chisel. And it says that Moshe is cutting them, but Yehovah mm -hmm. is writing on them. Mm -hmm. So that's very important for people to understand. Like, I've seen movies or Maybe it was like movie for TV type of one where Moshe is sitting there, tink, 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 like chiseling out the words on the tablet. Mm -hmm. That's not how it happened. The creator like manifested with a, um, what's the word? Uh, it's translated as finger or toe. <laughs> so an appendage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a literal finger. It's an appendage of the creator. Okay. And why why does he why does Moshe need to cut tablets of stone? Because he smashed the first contract. <laughs> so I, he has to rewrite it. So. And be ready in the morning. Then you shall come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. All right. And let no man come up with you, and let no man be seen in all the mountain, and let not even the flock or the herd feed in front of that mountain. Right. So, if you remember, this is how it was started with um, the the first approach to the mountain way back in chapter 20. It says, you know, don't let, or chapter 19 leading up to 20, but don't let anything come near the mountain, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, that's a set-apart place. And then all the people were hearing from the creator. They got scared. They backed off. They said, Moshe, you go get the commandments and we'll listen to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he took too long. So then when Moshe came down, they were having a <clears throat> shenanigans <clears throat> to a golden calf, which the golden calf was not a false idol. It was a false representation of the creator idol. Mm -hmm. And then so. Moshe didn't go back straight back up the mountain. He was in the tent communicating with the creator. And then he says, okay, we need to like reestablish the contract with this new system I'm putting in place, which is the sacrificial system for sins and atonement, which is going to come up later. But this is like instructions that he was given in the tent. This is not stuff that he was given on the mountain. Because that whole thing was established to re restore the contract. So now he has to rewrite the contract with the new stipulations of holding the contract in place, which was the sin sacrifice. That's going to come up. I'm, I'm just clarifying that for people in the audience, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Awesome. And he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, 
Then Moshe rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai, as Jehovah had commanded him, and he took two tablets of stone in his hand. And Jehovah came down in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name Jehovah. So who's proclaiming the name? Jehovah. That's right. And Jehovah passed before him and proclaimed, Jehovah, Jehovah. And El, compassionate and showing favor, patient and great in loving commitment and truth. Watching over loving commitment for thousands, forgiving crookedness and transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Got to gotta clarify this one really quick because this is a major problem within religious circles. Mm-hmm. There's this thing called generational curses. Mm-hmm. Generational curses are only a curse if you continue the curse. In other words, you could have a very wicked father and a righteous son, and that son will be righteous because he's righteous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Typically, the third and fourth generation is a situation where, well, the father hates the creator, so the son hates the creator, and the grandson hates the creator, just because that's what they were raised up in. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not. It's not like okay, your dad was bad, so now you're going to be punished. That's not what it's saying. It's visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So if the crookedness is there, that's what's punished. Righteousness is not. And the crookedness is the twisted guilt. So um, like uh, a mingling is uh, twisted. So that's also not just um, outright doing evil stuff, but it could be just like getting stuff all backwards, all twisted, right? And uh, the the loving commitment, you know, this is this is the uh, the bowing down kindness. So this is the creator, like when it says the word bless, that's uh, it's like somebody taking a knee, okay, mm-hmm. and then giving a gift, and the bowing is like humbling, you know. So this is the creator coming to meet us if we're in right standing with him. But what I find very interesting is again forgiveness being a new testament concept where here we go it's chapter 34 of exodus the creator speaking of himself saying that he forgives crookedness and transgression and sin Mm -hmm. right but you have to be um humble yourself you have to be able to say i screwed up i need to get right you know Mm -hmm. that's forgiven Mm -hmm. if you're like uh, I, I understand what the creator wants, but I'm going to do my own thing. That's not forgivable. Right. Which makes sense. Right. Right. It does <laughs> if your child, sense. if your child says, well, I don't really understand why you're asking me to do this, but they do it anyways, they're not going to get in trouble. Um, but if they say, well, I know why, why you want me to do this, but no, I'm not doing it. Like that can't be forgiven. They have to, you know, they have to work within the parameters, you know, it's not a problem to question, but it is a problem to like have straight defiance. All right. And Moshe hurried and bowed himself toward the earth and did obeisance. Yeah. So he showed his crown or his scalp. So he, he bowed and said, if now I have found favor in your eyes, O Yehovah, I pray let Yehovah go on in our midst, and even though we are stiff-necked people, and forgive our crookedness and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. That O before Yehovah does not exist anywhere in the scriptures, but it's in a lot of places. <laughs> you know, where it says, like, yeah. O oh, Lord, like uh-huh. that O, like, it doesn't exist anywhere. <laughs> I don't know why they just pick and choose where to put that thing <laughs> oh no oh no. Jehovah. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> all right and he said see i am making a covenant before all your people i am going to do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among whom you are you are shall see the work of Jehovah. for what i am doing with you is awesome <laughs> right so <clears throat> now he's saying, and, and even the, the heading is actually 
good to be there, like the covenant renewed, mm -hmm. because that's true. It's not a new contract. However, it's the start. It's the renewing of the covenant. It's the contract. Okay. So, hey, look, I'm making a contract with you. Oh, I thought you already did. No, no, no. You broke that contract. So now it's, you know, it's adjusted a little bit. Contract continues. All right. Guard what I command you today. See, I am driving out from before you the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Peretzite and the Hivite and the Yavusite. Very good. Guard yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be snare in your mid lest it be do a not, snare in your midst. Yeah, do not make contracts with the deities of the land that you're about to inhabit. Don't put a contract in with those deities. But break down their slaughter places and smash their pillars and cut down their asherim. Yep. Let me get into this real quick. Mm -hmm. um, action to their altar, break down them. And action to their stand-up pillars of them. And you shall burst out, exchange the asherim. With the Ashrim, which the the Eim makes it plural, from Asherah, which is those of Asherah, Ishtar, Astarte. This is where we get Easter. Uh, this is where they would have uh, Ashrim poles, which would be decorated tree poles that they would sometimes cut down and put in their house and decorate, you know. Especially during the winter time, you know, to keep it. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, this is like um, for people who do the modern day, you know, religious holidays. Even though I what I find really funny is people who claim to have no religion, but yet they celebrate these religious holidays mm -hmm. every year because mm -hmm. it's just the culture, mm -hmm. right? Right. And the tradition, mm -hmm. but the tradition, like the roots of them is like pretty gnarly. So yeah, I think roots matter. Yeah. For you do not bow yourselves to another mighty one for Yehovah, whose name is jealous is a jealous L. And jealous, it, jealous could be zealous as well. Zealous or jealous. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they whore after their mighty ones, and slaughter to their mighty ones, and one of them invites you, and you eat of his slaughterings. Okay, so eating of his slaughterings, like, a lot of times, their uh, sacrifices would be the cheap meat, which is pig, you know. So, it, it, it talks about in the scriptures that the, the pig meat is the most detestable thing to have. So, um, and the, the whoring is the, the, the harvesting or, um, you sell yourself. How can I explain this? You sell yourself to anyone. Okay. So that's what a whore does, right? Mm -hmm. So a person who does not have their self established in connection with the creator can connect their self to this deity or this um mind control this system i mean there's a lot of different things because it, it doesn't just talk about worshiping deities as whoring it also talks about like connecting yourself to the inhabitants of the land doing their culture doing their traditions like all this stuff is included it's not just about deity worship it's about putting your your mind your energy your thought process towards a bunch of different things that separates you from co connecting to the creator. If you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. That's what it means, whoring. It, it's not like they're, uh, they're actually sleeping around or anything. <laughs> All right. And you take of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters whore after their mighty ones, and make your sons whore after their mighty ones. And anybody who's been in a multi-religion relationship... Sometimes you will compromise for the sake of your spouse, right? right? Right. Like, okay, you like doing it this way. We'll do it this way, you know, and then it goes on generational from there. And then, then you have to look back. Well, how did we even start doing this tradition in the first place? 
well, it was handed down from this person to this person, you know. Mm-hmm. So you you may be five generations down, and you're like, wait a second, I don't want anything to do with these traditions. Yeah. And then you separ- then that generational curse, quote unquote, is broken off from you, because it's like, nah, I'm not I'm not doing it like my great grandparents did when they were convinced that this was the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Do not make a molded mighty one for yourselves. And this is not just a false idol. This is also, even if it's a representative of the creator, you don't worship a solid object as the creator. Right. Guard the festival of Matzot. For seven days you eat unleavened bread as I commanded you in the appointed time of the new moon of Aviv, because in the new moon of Aviv you came out from Mitzrayim. And this is a decent translation, but it's Ha Aviv. It's the Aviv, because Aviv is uh, harvestable and roastable um, uh, barley. This is how this is how you determine the new moon when the when the barley is harvestable and roastable. Springtime harvest. All right. Everyone opening the womb is mine, and every male firstborn among your livestock, whether bull or sheep. Yeah, it, it's confusing. Go back for a second. It's confusing the way that they translated it. Um, because it says all that opens the womb to me and all complete of the herd and the flock, uh, their male open of the ox and the sheep. Okay. So what this is not, this is saying not everyone opening the womb, all that open the womb are mine that are male. So in other words, it has to be a male, the firstborn child of the, flock needs to be a male to be dedicated to the creator so it's a firstborn and it's a female doesn't even matter it's not even that that's not even part of the the deal here okay but the firstborn of a donkey you ransom with a lamb and if you do not ransom then you shall break his neck and we talked about that that's I, i don't think that's a good translation it could just be like you know remove his head so Every firstborn of your sons you shall ransom, and they shall not appear before me empty-handed. And ransom, ah, ransom's not a very good one either. Redeemed. So, okay, so in the escape from Egypt, the firstborn males of all of Egypt, because they refused to let the Israelites go, were taken out. But the Israelite firstborn males are redeemed. So all the redemption is, is it comes much later in the chapters, but you bring an offering to the tabernacle or later on in the temple. And it's a communion. It's um, you eating with your son and the priest, the sacrifice. So you're having a meal and sharing it with the creator. And that's the redemption, not the, Ransom. Ransom sounds like, you know, the child's kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> kind of a weird word to use there. Yeah. All right. Six days you work, but on the seventh day you rest. In plowing time and in harvest you rest. Yep. Don't matter what time of the year it is. Don't matter what you have to do. On the seventh day you rest. And perform the festival of Shavuot, Shavuot yep. for yourself. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Yep. And turn of the year, that would be the early. So there's two seasons, according to Torah. There's the early and the latter. So the, the transferring of the into the second season would be. Um, so Shavuot is the end of the spring, which is uh, a count of 50. Uh, Shavuot is actually sevens because it's seven sevens. <laughs> okay. And then a day. So that's from the spring harvest for 50 days. You can bring the first fruits offering. So anything you want to give to the creator of the first harvest, you bring it. And then the fest- festival, of the end gathering at the turn of the year, this is the fall harvest of wheat. All right. 
three times in the year, all your men are to appear before the master Yehovah, the, El- the Elohim of Israel. Matzo, Shavuot, Sukkot, three times a year. For I dispossess nations before you and shall enlarge your borders and let no one covet your land when you go up to appear before Yehovah, your Elohim, three times a year. Dispos- wait, dispossess nations. Dispossess nations. Okay, so it actually says I turn over the inheritance of the nations. Dispossess. Well, then it says I shall enlarge your borders. Uh, I shall widen your bounds. Yeah, that that's that's right. Enlarge your borders makes sense, but dispossess is actually turning over the inheritance to you. Like that's your inheritance now. That's mm-hmm. I I don't know why it says dispossess. It doesn't say that's anything a weird about word dispossess. To use, yeah. All right. Do not slay the blood of my slaughtering with leaven, and do not let the slaughtering of the festival of Pesach rem- remain until morning. And that's Pesach. Pesach, okay. Passover. Yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. And that's um, do not strike on leavening the blood of the sacrifice, and no, no stay, no staying or the inn. Uh, till daybreak, the sacrifice of the party of Pesach. So it says festival. So yeah, I guess festival works. Yep. <laughs> but that is Pesach is not a um, appointed time. It is a, uh, a sacrifice mm-hmm. specifically. It's a sacrifice of a of a lamb, a perfect lamb uh, for for Passover, right? To remind us of coming out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. And by the way, um, if y'all think that you don't have to deal with coming out of Egypt, I think America is a modern day Egypt. So, <laughs> well, with all the stuff we've read earlier in this, in this book with, um, the taxes and stuff, it's pretty, yep. it's pretty trippy. Yep. It's, it's very, it's nothing. There's, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Right. There's definitely it, a connection. It, yeah. And, and I, I don't like people who say like, you know, uh, America is the is the Babylon of Revelation. I, I don't like any of that stuff because every government that is in the group government system is, Babylon. is that system. Yeah, it's not any specific nation. So if you think that America is bad and you think this other country is great, well, they're under the same system. If they're still in the same banking system, the same government right? system, like you're still in it. <laughs> yeah. All right, bring the first of the first fruits of your land to the house of Yehovah, your Elohim. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Oh, I think this is the first time this this appears. This is good. Okay, so anybody who knows like a a Jew of the what's it called? Um Orthodox order knows they can't eat a cheeseburger. Yeah? And some even have two kitchens, one kitchen to prepare dairy products, one kitchen to prepare meat products. Right. And the thing is, is that it's based on this verse that shows up three times within scripture, this commandment. And what the rabbis did is they said, well, since it appears three times in the scriptures, it has three different meanings. So we have three different rules about dairy and meat. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. These rules are not in the scripture at all. You can eat a cheeseburger. This commandment has nothing to do with cheeseburger. What this is, <laughs> is a fertility uh, practice where they would literally cook a kid in its mother's milk for, for a fertility rite. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they would have a newborn baby and collect the mother's milk and boil the goat alive in the mother's milk. And that was a fertility right. And he said, don't do that. Hmm. Sounds kind of creepy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of creepy practices that they used to do. So, <laughs> I mean, it was worse when they were doing it with their own children, you know, so. Uh. And Yehovah said to Moshe, write these words for according to the mouth of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. And again, it's a renewing of the covenant because we've already addressed these Moedim in the past, right? These, you know, 
But again, the if you're if you're cooking a kid in the mother's milk, then you're you're whoring after other practices to appeal. You know, hmm. fertility is there with the creator. You know, milk and honey, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You don't need to cook a kid in its mother's milk to get the fertility of the creator. Okay. And again, creator is neither feminine nor masculine, both and neither, right? So right. That's why I want to make sure I clarify that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cami actually mentioned in chat, is it is Yehovah plural in this? Because it says Yehovah your Elohim. Uh right. let's go back to that. Right. Um scroll back. Up, up, up. It's not that one. What do you mean it's not that one? So this is, is a couple it, times the same way, right? Yehovah, yeah, your Elohim. Yeah, Here we go before the master, Yehovah, the Elohim of Israel. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can go ahead and look at that. That is plural. Uh, yeah, that's plural of... Uh, it's not Elohim. It's Elohi. Elohi is um, plural of, Okay. So it'd be strong leaders of Yisrael. So yes, Elohim is actually an improper translation right there. It's actually Elohi, uh, but it's still the same thing. Yeah, it's pluralized. And again, if you go back to Genesis 1, I believe that Elohim is plural. I believe that Yehovah is the collective consciousness eternally existing as one. So that's just Jack's perspective. And I believe that anyone who joins himself to the creator becomes part of that Elohim. All right. So now we're, uh, yep. Write these words. Uh, Verse 28, 28, 28. Yep. You just read 27. Yep. Yeah. I was like, where was I? Okay. And he was there with Yehovah 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat bread and he did not drink water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. Ah, good. Finally, we put the two together. We've had the tablets. <laughs> we've established that's the covenant. What is on those tablets? The ten words. Not ten commandments. Ten words. Okay. And 40 days, 40 nights, no food or drink. And Yeshua did the same method, by the way. Uh, 40 days, 40 nights, no food or drink. And Mm -hmm. this, there's something to this. I I just, I don't know what it is. I've not, um, not gotten there myself. The most I've ever fasted before is two weeks. So I'm very curious to see. um, Yeah, maybe someday. (laughs) Maybe when I don't have children and employment and (laughs) other responsibilities to deal with. Right, right. But yeah, it's, uh, there's something to it. There's something to it. But He, it says he wrote on the tablets, but this could be confusing because it says he was there, Moshe, with Yehovah. So now they're talking about two people here, 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat bread. He did not drink water. And he wrote on the tablets of the words of the covenant. Well, the he that is speaking of in this particular instance is Yehovah because it says that Yehovah wrote the words. Moshe carved them. Yehovah wrote them. Mm. Carved carve the tablets, I mean. <laughs> Not the words. All right. And it came to be when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai, while the two tablets of the witness were in Moshe's hand when he came down from the mountain, that Moshe did not know that the skin of his face shone since he had spoken with him. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. All right, so... He was there 40 days, 40 nights. Um, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the 10 words. And it says here that the two tablets of the witness. Okay, so in one place it says covenant, one place it says witness. So why is there a difference? There's not. A witness is, you know, something that testifies to something that happened. A covenant is the contract. Mm -hmm. So all these tablets are is a witness of the contract. That's what the two tablets are. 
Okay. I just had to point that out. Yeah. Now, the face shining thing, um, take it or leave it. My own testimony, maybe I'm a liar, maybe I'm not. Um, I'll tell you a story. I was downstairs with some friends during a Torah conference, and throughout mm -hmm. the night, we had this like metaphysical experience. And at the end of it, I started glowing to their testimony and my own. So I'm just saying, um, I think I've had this experience that it's talking about here where he didn't realize that his skin was glowing. Cool. Yeah, totally. <laughs> all right. And Aharon and all the children of Israel looked at Moshe and saw the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. Yep. Oh, quick, quick thing. Uh, some people use this. There, there was a, a thing back in the past where they thought the reason that Jews wore little hats is because they had horns on their head. Okay. And it was based on this verse because the, um, uh, shown the word that's translated as shown mm -hmm. is horns or cones so it's the description of the lights beaming, the cones of light. Mm -hmm. And so there was actually a tradition that was going around where people actually thought that Jews had little horns underneath their kippah. And that's why they wore the, their little skull cap. <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's funny. Context is everything. <laughs> But Moshe called out to them, and Aharon and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moshe spoke to them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that Yehovah had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. Right. Okay, so, all that was spoken to him. So this is not just the ten words, quote-unquote, ten commandments. This is everything. That was transmitted to Moshe. We're talking about Genesis 1 <laughs> till now. Like everything. Mm -hmm. So this this whole thing of like, he was up there for a long time, taking too long, so they built the golden calf. Contract broke, he goes back up there for another 40 days and 40 nights. Like, he's gone for a really long time <clears throat> just to get Ten Commandments. Bull crap. <laughs> Bull crap. So the, uh, the thing that's strange to me is when, you know, I grew up in church and for the 30 some odd years of my life, I never knew that there was this experience where Moshe came down and he was glowing so that people couldn't even bear to look at him. Like I didn't, I never heard that before, <laughs> you know? So it's pretty strange. Like maybe it's one of those things, like if they can't explain it, they just don't address it. They just don't get to it yeah. like that's that's too spiritual for old testament we can't look at that <laughs> yeah that's a metaphysical experience right there they can't <laughs> address that because that's old testament that's before the spirit oh nonsense <laughs> all right go ahead and when moshe ended speaking with them he put a veil on his face but whenever Moshe went before Yehovah to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out, he spoke to the children of Israel what he had been commanded. Right. So now he's doing, he's back to the tent of meeting, you know, and then whenever the creator would appear before him, he'd remove the veil, you know, to do his glowing. And then whenever he was done communicating with the creator, he'd cover his face back up. See, so yeah, none of this stuff, uh, I didn't know any of this stuff existed in the scriptures back in the day. And the children of Israel would see the face of Moshe, that the skin of Moshe's face shone, and Moshe would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. There you go. All right, so here we have the renewing of the contract, and we're going to get into the details in further chapters. We have that Moshe's face was shining because he spent 40 days and 40 nights with the creator, communing with him. We have 10 words on the two tablets of the witness of the covenant, which is the testimony of the contract. It's There's a lot of stuff here. Um, so, yeah, we're readdressing the Moedim, which is the appointed times. 
So yeah, it's a pretty full chapter here. Mm-hmm. And this is what it's like with um, the renewing of the connection to the creator at any, I mean, I've had a experience of my past where I was very separated from the creator for a per- part of my life. And then when I returned to the creator, it's like stuff downloaded, like, you know, okay. So now there's this whole new way of looking at things. There's this whole new perspective on life. Like it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of information at once and it takes some adjustment to get into the the groove <laughs> of this is my life now. Right. At mm-hmm. first it's very hard because you're like, you're breaking off the old generational curses, if you will. Right. We've been told some BS, right. Mm-hmm. Our whole life. And it's not just the Torah stuff, right. It's the same with the flat earth thing, with the government thing, with the pharmacia thing, with the, you know, geo, you know, planning thing. Like it's, you know, anytime that you have this shift, your paradigm shift it's going to be a lot of information at once. So people who are new to this subject, it may look like a lot of information, but like I tell people, like the easiest way to transition into being with the creator is the Sabbath first. And like, you know, it reiterated, it doesn't matter what time of year it is. It doesn't matter what shit you got to get done. Excuse my language. What it matters is that you take that time away from the world and connect to the creator that one day a week, the seventh day of the week. So on that note, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me check the chat real quick. All right. So nobody is unveiling this room except for super cozy man. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Close that one down. Woo. Karen B's chat is full. All right. Two, two, two. And yes, I, I, do believe that Elohim is a collective plural. So not the majestic plural that's in theology. I know someone was typing a lot of questions in there and like I refreshed my chat and I lost them or I changed it from top chat to live chat and now I don't see him again. Who's that? What now? There was somebody typing questions in chat. In Karen B or Karen B. Okay. Well, I'm on live chat, so I'll, I'll go through here. <laughs> Mother Dragon Dragon said, you started early, damn it. Because <laughs> you were one minute early. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Yeshua Yah or not? Or is he a created being? If Yeshua said, if you've seen him, then you've seen the Father, doesn't it mean he's the creator, a.k.a. the one of the same? Not in my perspective. In my perspective, if I connect to the creator fully, like I should be, then you should see the creator in me. If you see me, you've seen the creator, right? So it's not necessarily a reincarnation or a replacement for the creator as often proposed in religion. And just to give you a thought, why would Yeshua need to withdraw himself and pray to the father if he himself is the father? It, it just does not make any sense. It's, it's, um, uh, the- uh, theological gymnastics to try to produce a replacement deity. That's what it is. Why? Because they don't want to worship the creator of the Old Testament because it has too much responsibility. We have this new idea of a deity that washes away your sins so you can live however the hell you want, and we're still going to heaven. And I'm calling BS on that. I used to believe it. I used to teach it. I'm calling BS on it now. Because when you read through the entirety of the scriptures, No man is exempt of righteousness, of, you know, right judgment. Ignorance is forgiven. Defiance is punished. And that's how it should be in the real world. I wish I had a disclaimer button on my shirt that said what was just said. And then you just pressed it. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Um, Hello, new person. Careful, this isn't your average Karen. This one has been hijacked by Neo. (laughs) Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Let's see. Shout out to everyone in chat. There's no golden calf now. It's molten. Yeah. Not changing your ways will redeem the punishment, the curse.
Yeah. Changing your ways redeems. Yeah. Buys you back from the curse. Yep. Explain again what servile work is. If doing errands on the Sabbath, like getting fuel or paying rent or buying food, food is making others work. Okay. So this, everybody has to do with their own conviction, right? You have to, um, um, stick to your conviction, but always seek truth. In other words, everything you know right now may be right, but you have to be open-minded to continue to ask yourself these questions, right? So like paying fuel, I used to think, well, you know, I do a self-service fuel, so nobody's really working for me, but I've since had a stronger conviction that I'm not going to go to any place where people are working for me. And as far as paying rent, I mean, could you not have paid it on Friday? Could you not pay it on Sunday? <laughs> I, I mean, like for me, the main objective goal is to set this day apart so that everything that needs to be done during the week is done. I don't have to worry about anything on the Sabbath. I make sure if I'm going to, you know, and I do travel on the Sabbath and some people don't. And hey, that's their conviction. They can, you know, they should stick to it and seek truth. But I'll fill up my gas tank ahead of time. I'll make sure I buy food ahead of time. Like sometimes it just takes a, a pattern of doing it before you, you know, before it becomes more of a conviction to you, uh, where it becomes a way of life. Like, I don't even think about it. Like, oh, it's Friday. We need to make sure we get the gas and the food and da, 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 da. It's the day of prep. That's what we call it. Day of prep. Um, don't, we don't do you know, as far as buying food, yeah, we do it yesterday. We, we don't do it today. Um, if you go to the store, even at self-checkout, you cannot go to that store unless somebody's working there. You can't. It, you know, if the door is locked, <laughs> how are you going to use self-checkout? It's not going to happen. Somebody is working for you in order for that store to be open. Same thing with the gas station. Um, we all, real now, the science guy said, I personally ex experienced that. I don't know exactly which um, experience he said. Uh, I talked about a few different ones. Um, world news from around the world says all oh my God, fake news. This channel is okay. Um, I don't know if English is not his first language, but that was very weird. Um, is that on my yeah, main and, channel? and the, refer back to the disclaimer. <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. Was that on the main channel? That comment? I missed that. It one. was world news <laughs> from around the world. All, all, all my God, fake news. This channel is okay. Oh, so whatever. Okay. Um, until the debt of self-worth is lost, no energy will be spared. Never heard of the word obeisance, huh? Yeah, obeisance is basically bowing down. Uh, selfishness is the issue. 100%. Look, <laughs> the, look in Christianity, <clears throat> they focus on the verse. Excuse me one second. In Christianity, they focus on the verse... Uh, where Yeshua said, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I think that verse is sketchy because um, I think the creator would agree, and Yeshua as well, that selfishness is the root of all evil. <laughs> uh, every sin, it goes back to self-serving. Um, I guess love of money would be selfish, right? Say love, again? Love of money would be related to selfish. Yeah, greed. absolutely. But it's not the it's not the end all be all because it says the love of money is the root of all evil. Oh, yeah. That's nonsense. Yeah. That's just one of them. <laughs> yeah. Like people who commit murder is not always for money. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. All right. Uh, Ashera, more to the story. Yeah, definitely. There's a, a lot, um, <laughs> a lot to that question. Thirty four eleven are referring to the giants. OK, let me look. And where it says like the Amorites, the oh 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 yeah, descendants of yeah it yeah could be um I I believe there are giants referred to that are related to those families, but if they were all giants, why would they refer to a specific giant within the family? You know, yeah. like I think there was giants within the family residue from the original giants, but I don't think all of them were giants. But that's my own perspective. Um, it does say that when they looked at one of them, which we're going to come to in a few chapters here, that when they looked at one of the cities that they appeared as giants, appeared as giants to them. And we are like grasshoppers to them. Um, so, yeah, that, that'll be coming up pretty soon. Uh, tribe of Ham, Ham, 
the story of cutting their roast, passing down tradition ritual. Yep. Does whoring also apply to working at your job as a slave? Mm, that's a good thought process right there. Like you're selling yourself for ev for a person who is directing your actions. Mm, that's something to think about. When I... <clears throat> hold on one second. Where he's asking about if that um, is your slave job, if whoring for others is, is like your slave job, like being in a slave job. Yeah, I, I would say it, it it can be it can be a slave mindset. Absolutely. Could be. Um go ahead. I was just saying? I was agreeing with you that it just it could be. I think it I think it's I don't think that's a hard fast like Yeah, it's it's rule. a mindset thing, right? So I was just about to explain, like when I start at a new employment, I tell them I'm never gonna work Saturdays. I have these appointed time, you know, once a year or twice a year where I'm going to be gone for a week and a single day in the, in the midst of that, I tell them I'm never going to shave my beard. I'm never going to cut my hair according to the way that they want me to. You know, I, I lay it all out for them because they are not my boss. They are my employer. Right. And so, um, a lot of people request time off from work. I don't, mm -hmm. I inform time off from work. Right. So it's the mindset of saying, like, they're not in control of my life. <laughs> I have free will. They're not my boss. They're not my master. They're not my deity. So, yes, it can absolutely be uh, a whoring after other um, entities. Uh, no, Alex, it's not referencing giants. It's of their bloodline. Yeah, uh, I just yeah, <laughs> we just talked about that. So. I'm surprised there's no Central Florida meetup. Hey, um, they just had one. Not... Go ahead. There just was a Central Florida meetup. They just had one on the 21st or 22nd. Who threw it? Uh, awesome Austin. Okay, so real night the science guy. Ask around. Does anybody know of any contacts in Central Florida, et cetera, et cetera? There's a ton. Um, Go check, go, go to flatearthfestivals.com and then go where it says flat earth friendly meetups and you'll see them there. Let me, well, now you have to go, okay. to, you'll see it under past meetups. Uh, real nigh the science guy. If you would like to, uh, message me in Skype. Just Jack Flat Earth, or email me just Jack Flat Earth at gmail.com. I'm going to be near Central Florida in early April uh, because we're going down there for my my daughter's wedding celebration and to meet up with some people for, for Passover. So I'm going to be near Central Florida for Passover. So shoot me an email if you'd like. I'd like to meet you. Um, this scripture study is so necessary. Oh my gosh, it just jumped. So I I just lost it. Oh, scripture study is so necessary and breaks so many spells of religious dogma and indoctrination. Thank you, Rasta Bear. I appreciate that shout out. Cheers, Rasta Bear. Uh, and cheers, Trevor Seven. I don't know what... I, I missed something. I missed something that um, Cammie was talking about she was talking about something is Talmud, not Torah. Oh, oh, normal and Orthodox Jewish kitchen. There you go. Talmud, not Torah. Yep. That's what we're referring to. Yep. hundred percent. That's not, that's not Torah. That's Talmud. Um, Elohim wants boiled babies. Sounds right. No, that's the false Elohim that wants boiled babies. <laughs> That's why it says, come out of her, my people. Question, does that mean we should do common law as well, where we are not beholden to the system? Again, I think it's a mindset thing, not a paper trail thing. But if you commit to the removing yourself from the paper trail thing, by all means, I see nothing wrong with that. In fact, I encourage that. <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you have the, the chutzpah <laughs> to get it done, feel free. You absolutely 
yeah, it's it's not a bad idea. Let's also, if you're not subscribed to the Crow Triple Seven Radio website and get their full length podcast, they do a lot of interviews with people as far as that stuff goes. Um, law, natural law, common law, private law. Um, I would go, even if you don't want to subscribe for the whole year, pay $8 and just go in there and download all the law episodes. It's worth it just for that alone, you know? Yeah. If you really yep. want to learn about that stuff. And and the, another thing to investigate is the land patent or a lodial deed where you own your own land and you're not of any municipality. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also very good information. Okay. Uh, hi, Jack. Hi, Karen. Love your show. Determined and something. Then there's different font that I'm not familiar with. Layout mm-hmm. night. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, Elohim and Yahweh are two different L entities. Elohim requires blood sacrifice. Yahweh is love and light. Yash- yeah. Yasha never claimed to be God. He is the son of God, just as we are sons and daughters of. Uh, yeah, so a lot of things to pick apart here. <laughs> okay, so Yahweh is actually the uh, Mediterranean form of Jupiter, so be careful. Do some research on that. Look into a guy by the name of Gesinius. He's the guy who changed the name uh, Yehovah or Yahuwah to Yahweh. And also... Uh, there are there are deities that were given na- uh, titles as names. For instance, Baal actually means the Lord or Baal, Baal. Um, there was a deity that was called El that, you know, it's just, it's a title that means like mighty leader, but they used it as the name for their deity. And God is the prosperity deity of Babylon. So even here it says, uh, Yasha never claimed to be God. Well, the only one who actually claimed to be God is the prosperity of deity of Babylon, but that was adopted by the Catholic church and presented as the name for the creator. So that's a lot (laughs) to unpack there in that one sentence. But yes, I agree. There are, there are false deities that that require the blood sacrifices for, uh, for the sake of like sacrificing, not, not for any other purpose. Uh, Ja, Ja, Yeshua came. Oh, Ja. Okay, so Ja, it, J was not invented till 600 years ago. It's the anglicized version of Yah. So um, Rasta Bear, I under, I, I, I'm assuming if you are have any roots in Rasta, you know that they refer to the creator as Ja. So yeah, it's very similar. It's the modern Yah. Uh, Yash, Yeshua came to show us how to live, not bathe ourselves in his blood. Correct. correct. I used to pray the blood of Jesus over people. And then the creator stopped me dead in my tracks when I was about to pray it. And he's like, no, that's wrong. And it actually says that the ones who crucified Yeshua said, may his blood be on our heads and the heads of our children. It's actually a curse. It's a blood curse. Blood rituals are sick and disgusting and not from the creator of light. I'm not going to use God again (laughs) because we just talked about that. Uh, It's a day of atonement every day for them. Okay. Uh, maybe I should give this fast a try. Yeah. Fasting period is good. Mm-hmm. The 40 days, 40 nights thing, you would have to be dedicated, right? Yeah, like both of them, fast, yeah. I mean, both of them happen in the wilderness. So they were not, they were not getting involved with any other human being. It was just them and the creator, uh, 10 words. Yeah, definitely. 100% 10 words, not 10 commandments. 10 commandments does not, uh, exist. Example of the 10 words. My best guess is uh, Exodus 19.5 before the colon or hyphen or whatever they use to break it up. Um, If you want to go there really quick, Karen. To which one? Exodus Exodus 19.5. Exodus 19.5. And the only reason that I say this is because I worked backwards from when he got the tablets. Because he got the tablets in chapter 31. And then I went back to look for, okay, where was this covenant that is in the 10 words? Where was this established? And it was before they arrived at Sinai in Exodus chapter 19. And there's a there's an ancient tradition even used in the Middle East today that, that says, um, and now if, right? So, and now if is the beginning of a contract, which is uh, veyata im. 
Okay. So Veata im is the beginning of a contract. And then the agreement of the contract is all that you say we will do or all that you say I will do. So if you imagine about a contract, okay, and now if, that's the way that you start a contract. And if you agree to the contract, you say all that you say I will do. And the other guy would say all that you say I will do. That's the agreement to a contract. Okay. So Exodus 19.5 says, and now if you diligently obey my voice, which is actually hear and obey, um, and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my segula, my protected treasure above all the peoples. And it's actually from all the peoples, not above. I don't know why they put above there. And then there's a hyphen for all the earth is mine, because that hyphen is actually a broken line in the Torah. So it's, it's not part of the 10 words. So the first part of 195, I believe is the 10 words that's my assumption. Okay. It's, I don't know hundred percent. This is my best guess. And then it says that when, um, he told all the people that they responded. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Yehovah. Uh, Oh wait. Da, 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 da. Okay. Sorry. Verse eight. And all the people answered together and said, all that Yehovah has spoken, we shall do. So that was their agreement to the contract. Mm-hmm. So that, that's my best guess. Do I know for a hundred percent fact? No, but I, I guarantee you 100%. It's not 10 commandments on that tablet. 100%. I know that for sure, for sure, for sure. And, um, Rasta bear, I think Yeshua is a re- representative of who, of who we're all supposed to be. I don't think there's this separation of the Mashiach being a specific individual. That is not something that we can uh, all hope to be like let's put it that way uh let's see do, do, do. example 10 words belief in god prohibition of improper worship prohibition of oaths, observance of sacred times yeah um respect the parents rabbis teach that our parents are the creators and stand in a relationship relationship to us in some real way too we have a relationship to the divine um, that's a good philosophy <laughs> to say that our parents are an extension of the creator and therefore you should have respect for them. Uh, prohibition of physically harming a person, prohibition of sexual immorality, prohibition of kidnapping interpreted to mean all theft. Uh, actually kidnapping is mentioned the same as murder, uh, prohibition of being false witness, harming a person through speaking. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I guess he's. I guess he's like using the Ten Commandments. Yes. Okay. So he's like. He's like explaining the Ten Commandments. Like we went through that, dude. <laughs> like <laughs> we really did. So. That is just the beginning of the commandments because the people drew off and they're like, we're scared. We're going to die. You go get the rest of the commandments. They were the creator was not done. Yeah, so the yarmulkes actually are a submission to rabbis rather than the creator. Uh, Look up the origin. They'll tell you. Uh Uh-oh. I lost my spot because it jumped again. Wow, there is a lot of chat. (laughs) Ripped the televisions from my home this week. It changed everything to get those scurrying mirrors out of my home. Scrying, scrying mirrors. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I'm assuming black witchcraft mirrors is scrying mirrors. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's what they call it. Like you know, he's calling. That's what he's calling TVs. Gotcha. Um. looking for any more actual questions. There's a lot of comments. <laughs> a lot. Okay, so we have a devout Christian in the chat, as I was once. Jesus Christ became our Sabbath. I choose to rest in him every day. Okay, so 
Mr. Miyagi, right? Mr. Miyagi. I'm assuming that means that you don't work at all. Like you, you have no employment because you, you rest in his Sabbath every day. The Sabbath is specific. The creator established it. Yeshua kept it. The disciples kept it. And generations after the disciples kept it until Constantine came and threw it away and reestablished the first day as the holy day. So the Yeshua is not the Sabbath. The being the the being of being Christ like is the Sabbath. Being one with the Creator is the rest. Money is a tool that can cre- greatly help the mission and is necessary. Yes. It's a, it's a necessary evil that we have to deal with. <laughs> Why do I say evil? Because evil does not mean mad. Bad, it means dysfunctional. Our money system is very dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah. And be a form of self- selfishness. Yes. There are more roots to evil than money. Yes. That, that was my point. Yep. I prefer to say selfful because ish includes sort of. Yep. I, I've talked about this too. Like um, in old English, Old King James English, awful meant something good, full of awe, right? And awesome is like, nah, eh, there's a little bit of awe in there. <laughs> it it it's all screwed up. That they, they did this on purpose. Um, you cannot function if you do not take care of oneself. That's true. Yeah. Taking care of yourself is one thing. Putting yourself above everything else is a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, every everything a person does for self in excess falls in the category of selfishness. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's funny. These people are taking the words out of my mouth. Um, root of selfishness. Yeah. We are all slaves to the grind. Yeah. Necessary evil again. Do, do, do. Oh, just a shout out Flat Earth Television again. I think it's flatearthtelevision.com or something like that. FETV.com. FETV Guide. FETV Guide, thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, cool website. Yeah, I was looking on there. Some of the links were broken from, like, there from, like, channels. I'm sure it's still in progress, but it's cool. It's cool. Stuff. I hope that the one who's um, typing and grounded ex- extracts is Najla, because I'm concerned if this is James. I don't put curlers in my hair, but my hair is longer than most. Not every womanly, but rather an extension of your super highway central nervous system. I don't think that's James speaking. Just <laughs> 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 dang it! It jumped down again. I hate when that happens. Ugh. All right. Samson wore his hair long. Yeah, he was commanded to. Y'all should watch from episode one onward as well. A lot of great info over the last year put into the stream. Agreed. If you haven't watched episode one, it's a must to understand. (laughs) Just Jack's perspective. (laughs) question yay what about loved ones that have passed on that pray to jesus aka yeshua and to yah interchangeably to save them and also just praying in general are they saved and will go to heaven i i tell the i say the claim is i'm not the creator right um it says that man judges outwardly but the creator judges the heart so that's between the creator and them i cannot say definitively that this is what gets you to heaven in fact that whole philosophy of get to heaven is a christian philosophy in the first place it's a transition of eternal or non-eternal that's it there's nothing about getting to heaven that's not not a thing because the interaction with heaven can be done here as a human being like you can actually interact with heaven heaven is here heaven is you know what you breathe in what you breathe out the, this place where we exist between the ground and the sky is heaven. <laughs> it's just been, you know, the, the, the 
verbiage has been changed so much that we don't recognize what heaven is. Heaven is the unseen existences that coexist with our realm that control everything of our realm. So again, watch episode one. <laughs> I, I break the, I break this all down. Um, someone said that long hair is only for women. Um, actually it was, um, it was a, a misquote from Paul that says long hair is a adornment for the woman or something like that. And nature tells you so, or, or something like that. But he was speaking of a cultural reference to make another point. He, he wasn't talking about women must have long hair. However, in my house, um, we don't cut our daughter's hair. And in my house, uh, you know, my boys and I, we, we pull our hair P O L L take account of our hair and cut off everything outside of our fist. So that's how we do it. This, this is my own thing. And I do it because this is how the priest did it. Um, this is actually in the Torah where they would take a pole P O L L and, uh, cut their hair. And then it says that they would not have their hair too long or too short. FYI. So shaving the sides of your head is against Torah. Uh, shaving your beard is against Torah. Trimming it is not, but shaving it is, um, I was saying you can have long hair and not necessarily women wear it as womanly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was joking because like, you know, you said womanly. So like, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes. As you, as long as you walk with Messiah, I'm not going to say Christ. Uh, as long as you walk with Messiah, you are saved. It's just difficult to walk with Messiah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it should be, you are Messiah like, right. You are connected to the creator so much that you're, thought process is based on doing the the heavenly walk if you will the metaphysical that is in favor of the creator uh, mormonism does baptism for their dead and loved ones to save their souls yeah and the catholics used to charge money <laughs> put a coin in the copper to save them from purgatory uh paul was a false apostle i don't care for his message I don't think he was a false apostle. I just think he had too much mingling in his uh, culture because he was a Pharisee amongst Pharisees and some of that like dragged over. Um, and in fact, he says that he, he says that I now consider all that I learned of that dung. I consider all that Judaism. I learned shit. So, <laughs> but, but some of it still lingered. It's just like, you know, if you're a Christian and you come to this Torah stuff, some philosophies of Christianity still carry over. You got to be careful. You got to weed those things out, investigate them for yourself. See if it actually says it in scripture, if it's just something that they presented to you in a religious framework. Jack, Jack was picturing me with curlers in my hair. Yes. <laughs> it was strange to me. And now I my, am too, James. My wife was also picturing <laughs> it. So, <laughs> All right. I have now exhausted the chat. <laughs> but um, shout out to everyone. Shabbat Shalom and you know take take advantage of this restful day. Shabbat Shalom. Do you think the millennial reign already happened? Um I'll say this. I don't give a shit. <laughs> 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 my my point is is if you're connected to the creator, why are you worried about all the bad stuff that's going to happen or has happened or well whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Your your focus should only be to get in direct connection to the creator so that you can do the will of the creator mm -hmm. to be one with eternity. All right. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Awesome. Hey, Rasta bear. I do not consider Paul as scripture F or, or applicable scripture. I just think it as a perspective from a specific individual. There we go. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. All right. Have a good Sabbath. Fantastic. Thank you guys once again for joining me and Jack for anti-religious scripture study. And, and the we'll earth be, is still flat. And the earth is still flat. And we'll see you back here again <laughs> next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was Shamaya chiming in. So All right. cute. All right. See y'all later.